Imagine you are an air quality scientist and you are tasked with constructing a mathematical model for predicting the carbon dioxide levels or CO2 levels in a room. It turns out that knowing CO2 levels in rooms is important for many real applications, such as ventilation, virus transmission, alertness of occupants and air quality. So being able to mathematically model CO2 levels is an important problem. So how can we do this? We will walk through the steps that lead us to a powerful differential equation that describes CO2 levels in the room. First, let's consider a room. Maybe this is a classroom, an office, or a room in your home. Let's give our room some openings, like windows and doors. And of course, this room contains some amount of CO2. To begin our model, we have to consider what would cause the amount of CO2 to change. Well, for the amount of CO2 to change, either CO2 must flow into the room through an opening, or flow out of the room through an opening, or be generated within the room. Let's write this using words before we introduce some mathematical notation. What we have so far is that the change in total CO2 is equal to the amount that flows into the room, minus the CO2 that flows out of the room, plus the amount generated in the room. What we have written here is a conservation equation. Now we just need to mathematically describe the terms in our equation. What we want to know is the concentration of CO2 in the room. Let's assume the room is well mixed, so the concentration is the same at every point in the room, and let's call this concentration C. We can think of this as the fraction of air that is CO2 rather than other gases like nitrogen. Then if the volume of the room is V, then the total amount of CO2 in the room is simply the product V times C. Therefore, the change in total CO2 is delta V times C, where the symbol delta just means change. So delta VC is the change in VC, or change in total CO2. Let's now think about what might generate CO2 in the room. Well, we know that CO2 is produced by processes like combustions, but in the vast majority of cases, our rooms contain no combustion sources, and the only source of CO2 is ourselves, since our exhaled breath always contains a lot more CO2 than what we inhale. Huh? So let's add N people in our room. And let's assume that we all produce CO2 at the same constant rate and call this G, which is the CO2 generation rate per person. So the rate of CO2 generated within the room is simply the product N times G. And the amount of CO2 generated during time interval delta T is the product N times G times delta T. Now, for CO2 flowing into the room, if the CO2 concentration outside is CO, and the rate of air flowing into the room is Q in, then the amount of CO2 flowing into the ring during a time increment delta T is CO Q in delta T. And we can follow a similar process for CO2 flowing out of the room. We already have the CO2 concentration in the room as C. So if the rate of air flowing out of the room is Q out, then the amount of CO2 flowing out of the room in a time delta T is C times Q out times delta T. We've now filled in all the terms, giving us our conservation equation. And actually, we are almost there. Going forward, it is just a case of tidying things up. First, we can divide through by delta T. We can also make another assumption that the air is incompressible meaning that, just like a box full of water, for every amount of fluid flowing into the box or room, this pushes an equal amount of fluid out of the box. For a room, this means that the flow in equals the flow out, and we can call this ventilation rate, that we will simply call Q. The final step is to consider what happens as our time increment delta T becomes very small. The reason for this is to tell us what happens at an instant. When we do this, our delta VC over delta T term becomes a derivative, dVC over dT, 
And because we can assume the volume of the room is constant, we take this out of the derivative, leaving us with our final equation. So let's recap. By just considering where CO2 can come from, we have constructed a differential equation that describes how the CO2 concentration in the room changes with time. This depends on the room volume, the ventilation rates, the outdoor CO2 concentration, the number of people in the room, and the CO2 generation rate per person. The reason we call this a differential equation is because our rate of change of C also depends on C. Now we have constructed this model. What does it actually tell us about the real world? What does the model predict will happen as more people enter the room? What about if you open a window? What about if you are exercising in the room? And do these model predictions agree with reality? We will talk about this in the next video.